you know that you know, we like um, two hearts that beats as one. We were so sure that we were going to spend our lives together. He seemed a perfect gentleman. But, oh, gosh, I've just hit the jackpot, mate. Yeah. I just knew that something was not right, and that gnawed away at me day and night. So what is it in total? I forgot. 27,500. I couldn't believe it. Where has my money gone? Her profile picture was her on her wedding day looking up adoringly into the eyes of her bridegroom. And her bridegroom was my husband. This whole incident has just altered my perception of people. Every person I've met is a lie. Everything's a lie. What an idiot. They are vile human beings, and I can't stress that enough. They care about money, and they don't care who they have to trample on to get it. The connection that I got with him was something I've never, ever, ever experienced in my life, ever. March 2015. Lynn Hawes has fallen in love. When he asked me to go to Dubai, I was ecstatic about yes. But the man Lynn thinks she knows doesn't exist. Something inside me was thinking, oh, what's going on here? She's about to be drawn into an international scam that will cost her over £100,000. I just thought, why have I got into this and I can't get out of it? I just thought, I can't cope with this no more. I just enjoy helping others. I get the satisfaction out of seeing people happy. Yeah, since I can remember, I've always been like that. I love my volunteering work. I'm a caring person. I'll, ne I'll never not be a caring person. It doesn't matter what anyone does to me. After bringing up five children, Lynn's relationship of 17 years broke down. I basically stayed in that relationship for the sake of my children. She'd instill good values into us. You know, always be on time, never be late. Always to do the right thing. Always finish your dinner or you don't have your pudding, that kind of thing. Yeah, she definitely pushed that on us. I decided that enough was enough. I'm just going to go out and date and have fun. My friend said, why didn't you go on a dating site? I was like, ooh, oh, I don't know about that. She said, well, why not? She, she'd been on one. She said, I've had a few dates. I'll take a picture of you and we'll put it out there. We'll set your profile up. So I was like, oh, go on then. Give it a blast. It took me weeks and weeks before I made my profile. Mixed emotions, really, because it's all new to me. I'm not very confident about meeting people. I was quite surprised that my mum went on the online dating, and, you know, because I've been in a relationship for so long, it's quite hard for anyone really to get back out there. And, well, it seems like a good way to meet people nowadays, isn't it? I hope she'd find somebody new, somebody that would treat her right, 
someone better than a last relationship, certainly. Anything had to be better than that. Lynn's profile goes live on the dating site Plenty of Fish. It beeps when you get a message and it was going beep, beep, and I didn't want to look at them at first. I must have got maybe 200 within the first week, yeah. It gives you a confident boost. Then, on the other hand, I was like, oh, gosh, that means I've got to meet them. I'd arrange to meet people and then I'd, I'd bottle it. And I'd just message them and say, I'm sorry, I can't, you know, quite a few times I did that, yeah. But one man stands out from the crowd. It was just such a lovely message. It's what he wrote, with kind words. That pulled me in straight away. Kind people do. He said, what an absolutely lovely picture. He said, it's nice to see women, not all dressed up. You know, just the casual look, he said. His name is John. We'd speak every day, sometimes four or five hours a day. He was interested, he wanted to know everything about my life, and I felt I could just open up to him. I told him things I've not even told my best mate. The connection that I got with him was something I've never, ever, ever experienced in my life, ever. Talking to her, and she said, oh, I've met somebody. And she said, he's really nice. I just thought, oh, wow, she, she's found somebody, you know, this this is looking quite serious. Definitely noticed a big change in her. Texting all the time, seemed really, really happy. Seems to be getting into things that she wouldn't usually be into. I remember talking about football, and I was like, not used to my mum getting into the football. I think John was into the football. She sent me a message one night asking me if I think it's possible to fall for somebody that I'd never met. He used to call me Chuckles. He always used to put a smile, I'm smiling at you. He just, he had such a way of making me feel good and I can't explain to anyone. I've never seen Lynn as happy as what she was. I finally got a message from John saying, right, let's go on a date. And I thought, right, yes, this is it. Now I'm going to meet him. He'd sort of said, right, we'll meet on, the, I think it was a Friday. I decided to pick the, the venue. And the pipe is quite a quiet little pub just up the road, not too rowdy. I just couldn't wait. I thought, I'm going to finally meet this guy. Pulled into the car park, I was about five minutes late. Got out of the car, went into the pub, and he was sitting in the corner bit as you walk in. He looked over to me, I looked over to him, and it was like, my legs actually went like jelly, honestly. But, ooh, gosh, I've just hit the jackpot, mate. He said, you're so much more beautiful in real life. I remember touching him and saying, you are real, and he laughed. I had a glass of water. He said, I don't drink and drive, so he just had a glass of Coke. I ordered beef burger and chips, and John ordered steak and chips. I remember saying to him that we're going to do things different. I'm going to buy the meal first. When I went to the toilet, he'd already paid the bill. And I thought, wow. Said it's all paid for, don't need to worry. Yeah. Just these little nice gestures. I remember him saying, Is it okay to kiss you? And I'd say, Yeah, kiss me. Yeah. That's it, I got my car and I went. She seemed like she had a good time, and that was a big relief that she actually met the person. 
and actually spoke to, because you never know who you're really speaking to online. So I think that really settled me and my brothers. He texted me to say, I just want to see you again. Can't stop thinking about you. He said, how about meeting up in Pargate tomorrow? I was like, whoa, a second date, this is serious. This is... Pargate, just like little tiny cute coffee shops and that. It's just a nice little walk. I remember thinking, God, he remembers everything that I say to him. Just knowing that I liked walking and enjoyed walking. We ended up just walking down the little prom pit, just sitting on the chair there and talking, just talking for hours and hours and hours. It just flowed. You know, there was never a long silence. I think I'd probably fallen, if I was honest. After the date, we just carried on talking. Everything was fine. My mum was in a place where, she, you know, everything was going well. She really liked this man. She fell in love with John. Definitely. Then, out of the blue, John tells Lynn he's been called to Israel on business for six months. It was a secret mission. That's all he'd say, you know. John says he works for an intelligence agency and his work must be kept confidential. I remember talking to a friend and I said, it's just a bit odd. She said, my friend, his husband worked for the FBI, he said he can't even say where he's going at certain times to his wife. She said, so that, that's pretty normal. He used to say, we'll carry on talking to each other. He kept saying to me, you will wait for me, won't you? You will wait for me. I'll also wait for you, 100%. So he, he left and we just carried on talking. And he said to me, everything will be fine, don't worry. Then comes some extraordinary news. He just texted me to say, it's just been told my dad's dead. It was a shock. Something to do with his liver because his dad was a drinker. He said he's in Dubai. I've got to go over there. My dad's left me something in his will. John tells Lynn he is inheriting £7 million. I remember thinking, I've never known so much, so much money. Like, I kept saying £7 million. He said, I've got to go over there. I've got to sign all the papers. I said, what do you mean, sign all the papers? He said, oh, we kept referring. Dubai lawyers are different than English laws. It's not like they do in England. He said, why don't you join us? So I'll be able to see you at the same time. So you know, kill two birds with one stone. Well, I haven't seen him for three months. I thought, yes, I've missed him so much. So I booked my flight. Next thing I knew, she was going to Dubai. Didn't feel very good about that at all. She'd never been there before, exciting place to go, so I was really happy for her. And I thought it was very generous of John to do this and must be a nice guy. All I can remember is be outside the airport, and the time he said wasn't there, and I was like, oh. He'd given me a number, so I was trying to ring his contact number, but I wasn't getting anyone who could understand English. And eventually I did. A man called Philip met me and said, I've got some really sad news to tell you. John can't make it, and he sent me to, to look after you and make sure everything goes like it should. He's really sorry, but his hands are tied. I was like, oh, my God. I thought, I just want to get out of here. Yeah, it was a nightmare, and I thought, I've got four days of this. And John messaged me to apologise. 
He asks Lynn to collect some documents for him and to check the £7 million is accounted for. John said, I trust you enough for you to carry on with what I was meant to do. I felt quite important to him. For someone to say they actually trusted me, you know, that's a nice feeling. I said, as long as there's nothing illegal, I don't mind helping you. Philip then takes Lynn to a five-star hotel. Just glass, like a big tall glass mirror. I thought, wow, that's spectacular. Philip went straight to the reception area. The people in there, they seem to know him quite well. I said, I can't pay now, because John said he was going to pay for the hotel. I said, I haven't got that sort of money on me. He said, oh, don't worry, we'll sort it, we'll sort it before you go. Philip gives Lynn an important piece of paperwork to take back to the UK for John. It's an anti-money laundering certificate. Keep it somewhere safe, it's very important. It was quite well presented. I remember saying, money laundering? I said, yeah, you've got to have a certificate if you're trying to bring money over. So I put it in between my passport in the middle and then put the passport with the certificate in into my handbag. Philip tells Lynn he will be back in the morning, along with a bank security guard, who will be carrying the £7 million. John sent me a code. He said, you're not to give it to anyone else. This is a code that will open my dad's case. I'm trusting you with that. You don't know who we can trust, Lynn. Philip and a security guard arrive at Lynn's hotel room with a briefcase. There, uh, said you've got the code. Put the code in, it just went ping. And then you've just seen all the money. It was like, whoa, jeepers. Well, I, I made me shake, actually. I said, Philip, that's not real. I said, I've never seen so much money in my life. I said, can I take a picture of her? He said, yeah, no problem. I had all white powder on the top. That was something to do with keeping it fresh or cleansing it. She said she'd seen this big case of money. And I said, yeah, but was it real? She insisted that it was real. I thought that sounded really dodgy. Philip gives some of the cash to Lynn. I paid the hotel with it. I went to the reception and said, can I pay my hotel room? And she took that money. I went to the shop nearby and spent some of the money. So that money was real. Philip said, who gives that certificate that I give you to look after? I said, yeah, no problem. It wasn't in my passport. So I looked literally everywhere. You know, when you think you're going mad. Philip is getting cross with me. You've caused so many problems. You should never come here. Lynn pleads with John and Philip to let her arrange a replacement certificate. I said, don't worry, you'll have the money, it gets sorted, I'll pay for it. She is told it will cost £10,000 and John won't let her pay for it. John was like, no, 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 no. I couldn't ask you to do that. And I said, look, please, please let me. I feel really bad. You know, I feel like I've let everyone down and this trip's been for nothing and it's my fault. But then John has a change of heart. He agrees Lynn can pay for a new certificate and he will repay her once he gets his inheritance. I said, Grace, thanks. I said, because I, I, feel, I felt like crap for the last couple of days. You know, so thank you. But Lynn doesn't have £10,000. On the flight home, I actually thought, am I living in a real world? The fact that this certificate had gone, where had it gone? It was driving me bonkers. I hadn't seen John. I'd seen all this money. It's like, whoa, quite draining it was. The stress was unreal. I've never, ever lent money to someone before to that extreme. I'm only my kids, and I've never lent them that much. I just, I just thought, oh, God, I need to get this sorted. Lynn lands in the UK 
and goes straight to her friend Anne's house to explain the situation. I told her the ins and outs of it and uh, just said, like, I'd be in trouble if I didn't pay it. Philip rung me and I said, Philip, can you speak to Anne and tell her that, you know, everything's OK? So she spoke, she had a conversation with Philip. Uh, she said, Jen, yeah, fine, I'll loan it you. I said, Grace, we'll get that back within the next month at the latest. Lynn covers the cost of the replacement certificate. I just thought, this is going to get sorted now. Like, thank God for that, and I get the money back. Oh, then John will be all right, and then everyone will be all right, and then I'll feel all right. I was quite stressed at this time. John tells Lynn his inheritance has been released from Dubai and flown over to the UK to be stored securely in a safe deposit box at a bank in Manchester. But then, there is another delay. It was on hold. No one could touch it until we got these cert documents. Everything was being thrown at my head and I just, like, wasn't sort of taking it in, to be honest. I did notice a shift in my mum when she'd become a bit more anxious. John was having a hard time sorting out paperwork and my mum was trying to help him out. John persuades Lynn to cover the costs of holding the money in the Manchester bank. I had to pay £1,000 a month to keep this money safe. But she is struggling to keep up with the payments. And soon, the total amount she has handed over reaches nearly £40,000. I borrowed money off my son. I borrowed 26000 off my son. He had a house deposit. I said, don't worry, you'll get that back. I even thought of selling my car at one point. I felt like I was digging a hole and I'm going to fall into her. I was trying to do the right thing and everything was just going wrong. The money is still stuck in the bank in Manchester and Lynn is still paying to keep it there. Suddenly, John decides Philip is part of the problem. John said, listen, Philip's messing me around. He's not dealing with it. He's messed up and he's cost me a lot of money. I've told him to go. A third man enters the picture. Lynn is introduced to Doug, a colleague of John's. John said he's on the ball, he's good, decent, you know, trustworthy, and he's going to take over what Philip was doing, and we'll sort this money out. I thought, oh, yes, that's great. Quite a relief. Quite a relief. You worry too much, he kept saying, you'll get your money back. Smiles. And it just used to think, ah, oh, yeah. He's right, I'll get it, I'll get the money back. Then Lynn's phone rings. It's Doug. He said, hi, my name's Doug. Oh, what, what a really happy sound. He said, John's told me how stressed you are and his main priority is making sure you're all right and this all gets sorted. It's a nightmare, he was saying. Why don't you come see me in London? So I thought, oh, yeah, come on then. He said, stay in a hotel and uh, we could meet up and have a good talk. Lynn goes to London to meet Doug for the first time. He was a big guy, a shaved head, quite handsome, very well dressed, very well dressed, immaculate. Open the door for you, a proper gentleman. I remember going down to London quite a bit. I think it was quite complicated and she kind of kept it quite quiet, really. Every time Lynn meets Doug, she pays him to cover the ongoing Manchester bank charges. But Doug starts adding costs on and Lynn feels compelled to pay them. Just thought, borrowed money off my son, I'll pay it. At that stage, it was like, I just want to get this sorted. Lynn didn't tell me much, and I didn't ask many questions, because we knew it would get into an argument, because I 
gotten my teeth into the fact that there was something not right. It was getting quite obsessive. I used to go to sleep thinking of it, wake up thinking about it, and ways I, I can get this right. Lynn and John's relationship begins to suffer. I was falling out with John. He was being quite nasty about the dog. I said, we're the ones with the stress. But John's behaviour only leads to Lynn and Doug getting much closer. We had something in common. Doug was the only one that understood. And soon, she falls for Doug too. I got intimate with him because we were both feeling it alone. It was just two people coming together under this situation. But it wasn't because I wanted to be in a relationship with him. It just, it just happened. We were connected. It just happened. I was surprised that she'd switched from John to Doug. I didn't understand a lot of it. I thought it was quite strange. She became quite secretive in it all. And Doug opens up to Lynn with persistent phone calls. Doug was ringing me up saying, if we don't get this sorted, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. I was like, oh, and he felt like killing himself. And he'd cry on the phone to me. I just said, God, if he kills himself, I'd never forgive myself. He wasn't in a good place. And nor was I. I was crumbling, but I, I just put on this front that I wasn't. Then there is a breakthrough. John's inheritance is released from the bank in Manchester and arrives in London. We'd sorted all that out. I was chuffed a bit. But there is a problem. The seven million needs to be exchanged from dollars to pounds. And Lynn is told this will cost 350,000 pounds. I, I just, I just, I, I just thought, why, why, why have I got into this? And I can't get out of it. I couldn't talk to anyone. I, I felt, I don't know what I felt. I just felt, I actually can't take this no more. If I hadn't lost that and this and that and all this, and it's all my fault, I just wasn't functioning properly. I went through hell and no one, no one, no, no one can, can, can understand. Yeah, it's horrible, because I, I totally didn't want to be here no more. I just thought, oh, can't cope with this no more. Then Doug reveals a plan. He says he's found a cheaper option. Then Doug said, I know someone in Germany might get it cheaper. And then he went to Germany. But it's still more than Lynn can afford. In desperation, she borrows more money. She's already handed over £60,000. I took out a loan for £15,000 on the 4th of July. She wasn't the type of person to have, like, credit cards or loans. She was always really against that. She always used to say to me, you know, sense with your money, don't get yourself into debt, don't buy anything if you can't afford it. She would always say, you know, don't lend people money. I ended up cashing my life insurance, I said. I had it was three or four different policies, which I'd been paying since I was 16. I thought, well, I can cash them in. You know, come on, we can do this. Like, I'll borrow some money. You, you promised me this is the end result now. This is it. This is it. And he said, yeah, yeah, promise, promise. Lynn's family and friends are becoming more and more concerned. My brother was saying, you know, she's totally in love. She just override everything she'd usually do. And she's vulnerable to give some money over. I was saying, but you know what Mum's like? There's no way she would give any money. You know how hard it is to get money out of her. So she wouldn't do it. Do you remember him showing me a statement or something of money going out of the bank? And that and that's when it was like closure for me. That, you know. Something's not right here. Lynn arranges to meet Doug in London to hand over £9,000. It's all she has to put towards the cost of exchanging the inheritance. But then, there is an unexpected turn of events. I've got nine grand ready to take to London with me in a suitcase, ready to take to Doug. But the day before, I get a knock on the door. Answer the door, there's two policemen. 
said, we've had reports and someone's very concerned. He said, someone believes you're getting scammed. I thought it was Kerry or my other friend. So I was a bit annoyed, really, because I thought, they didn't really know lots of ins and outs. So, so why would he say I was being scammed? But it isn't her friend. It is someone much closer to home. Enough was enough. It had to stop. It's Lynn's younger son who has reported it to the police. His identity is concealed because of his line of work. The final straw for me was the last time that she was going to London to meet this Doug to sort out matters of inheritance. But this isn't the first time he has tried to get the police to help. Before she went to Dubai, I, I went to the local police station and reported it as a, a romance fraud. They got someone to explain to me, as I'm not the victim of the fraud, there's nothing that they would be able to do without the victim coming forward. It was frustrating. Then someone came and spoke to me about it, and um, he said, uh, I'm worried about my mum. He said, well, she's got home with this, this fella that she thought is really nice, but um, he's, he's scamming her out of all, all the money. I contacted the police for the second time, and this time I said, unless you help, she's going to London tomorrow to meet someone. And at that point, they took it seriously. And they told me that they would try and persuade her not to go any further. The police give Lynn an information leaflet to read. It said, do not give money to anyone that you have met. I said, but I've met him. They ask her to contact John. He said, you get on to whoever you're speaking to now. Tell him the police are here. And the reason they come here, he said, you, you'll never hear from them again. I said, right, OK, then. So I said, taxi John said, the police are here. Someone's concerned they're being scammed. And they told me to let you know. He said, well, they're just doing the job. Don't worry about it. So I went back to the police and said, yeah, I'm not being scammed. I said, but thank you for your concern. And whoever it was, can you tell them not to worry? And then, then, then they left. It didn't go as I thought it would. I thought that it was going to be like a, a breakthrough moment and it was over. But this almost fueled her more that this man was real. It's very hard to see when you're telling them something and you can see she's just been brainwashed, but there's nothing really you can say at that time where she would change her opinion. Felt a sense of there's nothing really I can do anymore and really it's down to her. Perfect word to describe it is powerless. Also a sense of like, well, you, your sons who want the best for you. My hopes for my mum when, you know, when she left her previous relationship is she could find someone that actually... <laughs> Sorry. My hopes for she could find someone who actually wasn't toxic and she, you know, just have a good, happy relationship, do normal things and just enjoy your life, really. She's not easily feels, Lynn isn't. But then when you come out of a relationship like Lynn did, it knocks your, it knocks your confidence a bit. So um, when she found love, it made her happy and she thought it was the real thing. As you would, I would, myself. She's got her head on her shoulders in all aspects of life, but she was blinkered. She was completely blinkered. Despite all the warnings, Lynn goes to London to meet Doug and hands over the £9,000. On the train back home to Chester, she receives a call. John rung me because he knew that I'd, I'd literally had enough. 
and the number was United Kingdom number. But he's meant to be in Israel. Something inside me was thinking, oh, what's going on here? I was still trying to make excuses for things. And I thought, no, Lynn, that's United Kingdom. You can't make an excuse as you're seeing that. He's in the United Kingdom when he said he's meant to be somewhere else. I just felt the lies, uh, all the emotions you could feel, I felt these lied to me. That every, every person I've met is a lie. Everything's a lie. I've, what an idiot. What a dickhead. You apps, are you, what a stupid cow. What an absolute stupid cow. Why, why would you believe in, why would you, why would you choose to believe? Why did you not question it? Why did you, all oh, wise, 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 wise. There was all of a sudden a switch for my mum and she now believed us and she was like, yeah, I think this is a scam. I'm not sure exactly where that came from and why she suddenly thought that, but it was a big relief. My priorities had completely shifted then. I thought, right, I'm getting onto the police here. She phoned me and just said, I'm going to get the police involved. I said, why? And she said, I've given him money. I said, well, how much money? She said, about 100,000. I was shaking. I couldn't believe it. That evening, Lynn tells the police everything. Detectives explain she is the victim of a complex con. John, Philip and Doug are all working together and they are all false identities. All sorts were going through my head. My money that I'd lost, that was my stupid fault. But the mental side, what them people did to my head, if you would give me a choice, your money back for jail, I'd have said jail all the way. The police devise a plan. Lynn has to convince Doug to meet her in London, as if nothing is wrong. I said, right, this is how it's going to be. You're going to go to London, you've got to arrange to meet him for the 21st of September. Can you do that? I said, yeah, no problem. You're not to tell anyone. I said, look, I'll do anything you want me to do. I just want this to go ahead. Lynn previously told Doug she'd run out of money, so she concocts a story to make him believe she's found more cash the tables begin to turn. I thought the only way that I'd get him there is money. So I said that my mum had died, that I was going to sell a house. And with that, this was going to be finished for once and for all. Lynn tells Doug she can give him the outstanding amount of money, £27,500. It'd have to come on the 21st if you want the money, or I could send a cheque, knowing that he wouldn't take a cheque because his name's fake anyway. I hadn't heard from him, and I was panicking. I was like, oh, maybe he sussed me out and all that. She makes one last effort to get hold of Doug. Yeah. Try again. Here we go. Please, I'm fucking is he? Then Doug finally picks up. Hello, darling. Oh, my eggs. Do you know what? I've been so worried about you. Darling, you know that you know, we like um, two hearts that beats us one. Yeah. Are you all right, though? Are you all right? Yeah. I was so worried I... about you. Honest to God, I didn't know what to do. I don't know if it... I, I can't even remember, because I'm that up and down at the moment. Did I email you to tell you that the money's all... I'll be able to bring the money and everything to London? OK. But well, Wednesday is the only time I can make it, so... That's fine. Yes, All right, so what, what shall I do then? Shall, I, shall we meet up, say, sort of tea time? I'll book a hotel or something, and we can meet up yeah, like yeah, normal. I think, I think you should book a hotel. Yeah, is that OK then? So I'll book it now so I know what I'm doing, because I like, I'd, I'd so like to be organised, Doug, and I know it's not your fault. That's fine, darling. But, yes, that's fine, darling. So what is it in total? I forgot. Two, what's the total? 
So if I if I bring if I get that that's it though. The, 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 I mean yes. this this is there's no going back that because I've got well, the rest no, of my... no, there's, there's no going back there's no going back on it. Okay then so well, hopefully it should all be in my bank Tuesday. I'm fingers crossed, Doug. Thank you, darling. All right then so I'll leave you to it and Thank you, and uh, I'll let oh. you know as soon as I know. All right then. All right, my love. All right, all right my love. then. Bye. 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 Take care, baby. And you. Bye bye. Bye, darling. Bye. bye. After Doug agrees to meet her, the trap is set. So on the day of the sting, they rung me up the place and said, we booked the train for you. There'll be five or six police on the train. You won't know who they are. They're there for your protection. Lynn is told to go into the station toilets when she arrives in London. Went into the Houston toilet, was told to just wash my hands and put my bag on the side. Someone would come in, took something out, put it in my bag and just walked off. That was it. I, I had a tracker then. So if I got lost, they could pinpoint where I was. So I was on the underground. Lynn travels across London, followed by six undercover police officers. It was like a movie. It was like a 007 sort of thing. So I got at the hotel about four o'clock. Rung Doug to say I was here, and he said, oh, I've been delayed, so I'll get to you as soon as possible. He was expecting her to hand over £27,500. Lynn waits and waits. I was at the bar, and they had the police all, all around the tables. I was sitting at a place where you could see both entries. So as soon as Doug come in, he told me to put my bag on the table. He come over, put his arm around me, come from, from all over the place, grabbed him, and then that was it. And we arrested him. I remember Doug looking at me. He didn't say anything. He just looked at me in a sad face as if to say sorry. He didn't know at the time that it was me that had set him up. In less than a year, Lynn has lost over £100,000. She has borrowed over £40,000 from friends and all her savings are gone. The £7 million inheritance never existed. The identities of two of the men Lynn met, John and Philip, remain a mystery. But at his trial, Doug is named as Ajibola Dawudu. He is sentenced to 45 months for fraud and deception. Finally, Lynn's nightmare is over. He got what was coming to him, and I think it, it felt almost like a win from the mum. Like she won up there. I was really happy with that. I was very surprised to see her turn the tables on him. I wouldn't have been able to do it. No way. But she did. Lynn is bossy. She really is. She's a big fighter, yeah. Words can't express how I felt, you know? Just the pure pleasure I thought, but you know, you've scammed me for this many years. There you go, mate, back at you. Back at you. And more episodes of Love Rats are streaming now on Paramount+. Plus. 
Next here on Channel 5, we're on the front line with the remarkable team from Royal Stoke Resus in 999 Critical Condition.